Hello everybody, Conti here with another video. How to create an ATM withdrawal menu command line interface using the high level programming language Python 3.8.2. The online application used in this particular tutorial is ripple.it. A link to this website can be found in the video description box. The left side of the screen will contain my source code and the right side will be the console which demonstrates how the program works. In order to create an algorithm where the end user gets unlimited turns at withdrawing money from an ATM, a variable needs to be created which will trigger or stop a loop. In this case here on line 1 I have typed in the variable name response and assigned it with the lowercase value y. My intention is to create a program where at the end of a withdrawal the end user can respond to the interface by saying that they want to make another withdrawal or leave the program. As long as the end user will type in Y for yes, the program will continue running, just like in a normal ATM bank machine where the client can take multiple turns at making withdrawals from an account. The loop for this function has been started on line 2 using while and with two equal symbols between response and the value Y telling the program that subsequent commands after this particular line will continue running as long as this variable contains a lowercase y. The starting line of a loop should always end with a colon, as is highlighted here on line 2. An indentation has been made for the start of the command on line 3, where a message is displayed to the bank ATM user, giving them the instruction to type in an amount which is a multiple of 10. Note how on the Ripple application here, there are two lines directly below while, showing the amount of times that print has been indented. Four spaces separate the word print from the start of line 3 here, and you can also create this indentation by pressing the tab key twice. Along with the message contained in quotation marks, at the very start of this message is backslash n. This syntax which is written alongside the message that will be displayed to the user will insert a blank line before displaying the text. Since the end user will be typing in a whole number, we need an identifier name for this number to be stored in and another variable called amount has been created on line 4. The word int has been placed before the built-in function input here to ensure that the end user types in a whole number, an integer. Once the end user has input a number, we want our program to check to see whether the number entered by the end user is a multiple of 10 with a result which comes out as 0. The percentage symbol in Python basically represents a modulus calculation. If the end user were for example to type in 20 as the amount that they wish to withdraw, we can subtract 10 from 20 twice and come up with 0. If we typed in 23 on the other hand, the final modulus result will come back as 3 as the remaining number and so will therefore not be accepted by this algorithm. Ensure that you use two equal symbols when creating a conditional statement starting with if, just like what we did with the loop line. As demonstrated at the start of this tutorial, I wish the ATM interface to display the number of 100, 50, 20 and £10 notes that will be withdrawn from the ATM machine. What we will do in this particular algorithm is start with the highest note value and use an integer division calculation to work out how many 100 notes will be required for the user. If the end user were to type in 120 for example, the result of a straight division when you divide this by 100 would be 1.2. However since we use two division symbols here with the forward slashes, the 0.2 value will be ignored and only one will be returned as the result. This is because we can only put 100 once into 120 and the remaining 20 will be used in a different calculation later on to find out how many additional smaller value notes that the end user will require in their withdrawal. On line 7 a message is displayed to show the end user how many 100 notes will be withdrawn. Again a blank line will be inserted with backslash n before the quantity of 100 pound notes is displayed to the end user. Since the variable hundreds stores a numerical value we use the built-in function str to convert this to string type so that this prints off in text. If using the same example before the end user types in 120, we want one 100 pound notes to be displayed on screen. 
The subsequent two lines will calculate how many £50 notes will be given to the end user in this withdrawal transaction. The calculation in line 8 is slightly different to that on line 6, where we use modulus instead of integer division. When calculating the number of £50 notes, we need to consider the results that we already have for the £100 notes section on lines 6 and 7. Using Notepad, I will go through an example. Let's imagine that the client wants to take out £290. For the first calculation on line 6, we will do an integer division of 290 by 100. A straight division here would result in 2.9 as the answer. However, since this is an integer division, the 0.9 will be ignored and the value is not rounded up. Since two £100 notes have been prepared, we have £90 remaining. If we go to the next calculation on line 8, using the original value typed in 290, the modulus result of this will be 90. So 90 is the result of the calculation that goes on in the first pair of brackets in line 8 by the variable 50s. Note after this is done, we also need to do another modulus calculation with 100. We can take this value of 90 forward to the final calculation on line 8 where we do an integer division with 50. The result of a straight division will be 1.8. Given the integer division calculation, we only keep 1. And this particular value will be used in line 9 to display the number of £50 notes that will be given to the user in this withdrawal. So far we have printed two £100 notes and one £50 note, with £40 remaining. The pattern from line 8 is repeated for 20s and 10s. Note how an additional set of brackets is needed for each variable. Since we had £40 remaining from the 290 withdrawal request, as a result of the calculations for the values 400s and 50s, we should be able to use line 10 to calculate two £20 notes which can be used for this remaining quantity. And so using my empty notepad file again, I will display the four calculations that go on on line 10. After all modulus calculations are complete, we end up with the value that we need to make up with either 20s or 10s. And therefore since a straight division of 40 by 20 equals 2, we can display two £20 notes on the console for the user in their withdrawal. And since there is no remaining value, there should be zero displayed alongside £10 notes once this is displayed on the console. Going back to line 5 where we found out whether the number entered by the end user is a multiple of 10, a message will need to be displayed to the end user if this is not the case. For example, if we type in 33, we need a message displayed instead of the calculation going on from line 6 to 13. On line 14, the term else is used to tell the program what to do if the outcome for this particular conditional statement is false. And in this case here, a message will be displayed to the end user reminding them that their number should be a multiple of 10. Note how the number of indentations that else and if have are the same. Once all note calculations are complete by the end of line 13, we need to display a message to the end user asking them if they wish to make another withdrawal. As mentioned at the start of the program, the variable response stores the lowercase y, which will trigger the loop starting on line 2. The end user will be prompted for the same value on line 15, which will make the program restart. Should a user type in any key as prompted by line 16, such as the letter a for example, then line 17 will place this value inside the variable response and the program's interpreter will return to line 2 and will find that the value in response is not equal to that in the condition mentioned at the start of the loop command. And as a result, the loop will finish and skip to line 21 where a goodbye message is displayed. Now time for a demonstration using the application's run button at the top of the screen. Thank you very much for watching, I hope that video was useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like, share and subscribe. Join me soon for another video, take care.